All right, y'all, this is a semi-funny, probably more depressing than it is funny video. In the era of cancel culture, it is actually just moronic to post anything from your phone to the internet. Don't do it. Terrible decision. You will regret it. It's impossible to tell what is going to be racist, transphobic, sexist, whatever it is. Today, tomorrow, it's changing on a minute, hourly basis, and sadly, for one New York resident, the internet is now referring to as Bodega Bro. He has found this out the hard way. Just honestly, guys, delete all your social media. It's not worth it. Unless you're like me. I am way too deep in. It's way too late for me. Everyone else, just delete it. This poor guy had just moved to New York, working a new job, posting about his experience living in the big city, which, you know, I've spent some time in New York myself especially Brooklyn area, you know, Bronx. My first night visiting New York, I will never forget it. I watched a guy threaten to shoot a Papaya King cashier because she wouldn't let him touch his hot dog before buying it. <laughs> so, you know, it's not crazy that someone would document their experience adjusting to the local culture in this city. It's a wild place. And uh, if you're wondering why the guy has been dubbed Bodega Bro, well, that's because he decided to film his first bodega experience and his thoughts on that, which looked something like this. Okay, so I just moved to New York and I'm trying to go grocery shopping. And so I type in like grocery stores on my Apple Maps and like every fucking one I go to, like I'm walking too, like they're like this shit or like fucking like this. Like, bro, that's not a grocery store. Like I'm trying to get like eggs, yogurt, like cheese, like shit like that, right? Like, look at this place. Hey, yo, Ak, let me get a bacon, egg, and cheese. The Aki way. <laughs> like, you know those TikToks? Like, I'm, I'm fucking doing it. Like, I've literally been to, like, five of those now. <laughs> and, like, I don't know what the fuck I'm about to do for dinner. Like, where are the Kroger's and, like, the Whole Foods at? Like, I'm about to eat fucking, like, like cereal and ramen for dinner. Like, what the fuck? Pretty normal, reasonable observation. Kind of weird that you don't have grocery stores in certain parts of New York and everything is just cereal and ramen noodles. I I'd say a pretty normal observation by this guy, but no. <laughs> it's 2022. This can't just be a video acknowledging reality. This has to spiral into an absolute Twitter chaos storm of racism allegations, mob justice leading to the eventual firing of this man. That's right, this guy, Bodega Bro, lost his job over this fucking video. Ugh. But before we get into the wild ride that is Bodega Bro's life, Let's say a massive thank you to this channel's sponsor, Noble Gold. Over the years, you've probably tried different investments in stocks and mutual funds, so you know they can be up and down all over the place. But with inflation running at 8.5%, its highest rate for 40 years, do you really need uncertainty in your life? Being able to sleep at night knowing your investments aren't about to crash is worth its weight in gold. And speaking of gold, if you've been jumping from one investment idea to the next, a gold IRA with Noble Gold is perfect for you. With gold, you shield your gains from taxes, you keep the real value of your wealth, you own a global asset, something tangible, and you protect your wealth against an economic crash. What is not to like? And this month, for every cash deal above 20k, you'll get an incredible 3-ounce silver American Virtue coin completely free as a thank you. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold. Call 877-646-5347 now, or find out more by visiting noblegoldinvestments.com. Okay, so last few days, poor Bodega Bro posts this super innocent video to his TikTok, sharing with the world his unique experiences he's having in New York. Now, I don't know if it's just because Bodega Bro is a conventionally attractive white man and that set people off seeing him. I think that's probably part of it. Or if it's just that the woke scolds were having a particularly slow night when it came to being internet hall monitors. I don't know. But they just lost it over this stupid 
effing bodega video. There's so much to say. He probably doesn't want to hear what I have to say. And that's fine. This video isn't for him. This video is for all the people who always say, Dutch, why do you get mad about people moving to New York? And it's because they often have attitudes like that. They come to the city, in this case, the Bronx, and instead of integrating themselves into their community, they just make a mockery of it. I mean, what, he's been here like two days and he's found a way to make fun of the stores that many people in the community rely on. Stores that people have to rely on because the supermarket he's so desperately looking for doesn't exist because he's moved to a city which is historically and still today systematically deprived certain neighborhoods, neighborhoods that are predominantly black and brown and or working class of basic resources. I know you're gonna say it's not that serious, but it is. How would you feel if somebody came in your house uninvited and started making fun of all your furniture? So I am not at all mad about somebody moving to New York. I'm mad about people moving to New York and having attitudes like that. There's comedy and then there's mockery and there's a very clear difference between the two. Oi. I hate this guy so much. <laughs> what? He's not even mocking it. People acting like Bodega Bro is coming in here and being some culturally insensitive stuck up prick for wanting to be able to buy some damn vegetables at a grocery store in a first world country. You know, Perhaps take a look at yourself and consider if you're the weird one for not agreeing with him that this is an issue. Y'all talk all day about how certain neighborhoods are systematically deprived of proper and healthy food, and then you have someone out here actually pointing out how strange this situation is, and you all lose your shit and call them a racist. It reminds me of that uh, Norm MacDonald radio interview where all he says is, black people are poor. And the interview host just loses it and calls him a racist. You. Uh, well, uh, well, where does she? Is it in? A, uh, are there black people there? <laughs> oh my God! Where what does the that have to do with well, Why is it harder if there's black because people there? black people are generally poor, and poor people are generally dangerous. <laughs> oh my God! Wow, I can't Norm. You just went there. <laughs> What, black people are rich? Blind, they're black people <laughs> span all the strata. No, 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 no. And you, you're saying you, they, you gotta, white you people are poor. And, oh no, black God. people are poorer than white people. You didn't know that? <laughs> Are you telling Norm. me that you think black What I'm saying is that I don't I try not to pigeonhole people into, into black people truth. are poor. Not into the truth. What? Listen, there's a huge ignored middle class black population out there. How dare you say black people are poor and therefore dangerous? Because I want them to be not poor, that's why. And really how are you going to what's your plan? My plan is to first of all uh, admit that the the black people have less money than white people. Progressives, you want people to simultaneously agree with the narrative you spout about privileged and underprivileged classes in society, and then, when they actually point out what underprivileged living looks like, whether it be Norm MacDonald saying, hey, black people are poor, or Bodega Bro being shocked he can't find vegetables in the Bronx, or basically anyone acknowledging any crime statistics ever, y'all lose your damn minds. As Norm put it, the first step he's going to take to fixing these problems is by acknowledging they actually exist. You can't just talk about it in this, like, ethereal manner, only in classrooms at universities. You have to look at what is actually happening on the ground. You have to observe what that culture actually looks like in reality. But all these woke schools on Twitter, they're just losing it. Like, no. Don't show people how they actually live in the Bronx. Let's just sweep that video of the Asian woman getting her ass beat in New York under the rug. Let's pretend having grocery stores with just Lucky Charms on the shelves is perfectly fine. So normal. Like, don't even look at this, white boy. Just throw money at the Democratic Party, pay your penance to the saints of anti-racism, and shut the hell up. But you know what? Bodega Bro couldn't do it. He couldn't stay silent. And as Abdullah put it, Bodega Bro was crucified for the same reason they all get crucified. He was a soul untainted by the inner city filth most coastal Americans are just used to. Showed up, saw it, and was just honest. And eventually, for daring to partake in said honesty, the woke schools went and found his employer. Of course. <laughs> of course. What else would be a reasonable response to someone having an opinion on the internet? Uh, he was employed by a company called Outreach, and some literal Twitter nobody with an anime profile photo and questionable literacy skills sent a tweet saying, I don't think it's very flattering to have this type of person representing your company. I would revalue his employment if I were you. 
should have been an easy block and ignore, right? But no, as mentioned earlier, this is the current year. Man has evolved to no longer require a spine, apparently, and Outreach.io respond to our anime profile friend, saying, Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Upon investigation, we took swift internal action in accordance with our company policies and in alignment with our core values. I didn't realize your core values were being a bunch of He is no longer an employee of Outreach. I truly cannot put it any better than this one account Classical Zoomer did. Firing an employee because strangers on Twitter got upset at their observations about poor New York City deli produce options is an unimaginable lack of character and loyalty. And while I agree that I'm more disappointed in this company's behavior than anyone else, the people who engage in this sort of Twitter mob life ruination are just the scum of the earth. They want nothing good or decent in the world. They don't do this because they want people to be better, kinder, less racist, less sexist, less whatever. They do it because it is a small shred of power in their pathetic little lives. If they cared for a second about trying to make this guy engage with the world in a less problematic or less harmful way, however they want to portray it, they would personally reach out to him. They'd message him on a human to human level and try to talk to him about it. Try to talk about, hey, maybe you could have done this different. Maybe you could have, you know, added this to the end of your, whatever it might be. You know, that sort of actual genuine engagement with another human. Not blasting this guy on Twitter, they don't know, taking his work, trying to ruin his life. You don't do that shit when you're actually looking for healing. It's it's a truly tragicomic state of affairs we have found ourselves in. You know, even more tragic that some of these people genuinely believe they are the good guys. I don't know what New York City or the world holds for our friend, uh, our recently unemployed friend, Bodega Bro, but we all wish you well, King. You know, you've been another casualty in this culture war bullshittery, and all we can do is hope that it's waking more people up to how sick, how sick this all is. I'll see you all next time. Be sure to share this video, hit like, and comment down below.